So cast your mind back to the early 2000s when people used to walk down the street without bumping into each other because they weren't all looking at your phones. During that time, there were two main competitors for providing the central processing unit to a computer, Intel and AMD. Our investigation studies what did Intel do to keep its competitive advantage over that time period, and we provide some lessons to antitrust authorities about how to think about these types of competitive arrangements. Our research looks at the effect of vertical restraints, and vertical restraints are essentially exclusive deals, and in this example, they're exclusive deals between a CPU processor, so Intel, and a downstream firm, so a PC maker. And that says that basically you're only allowed to sell my product. Dell was not allowed to sell any of AMD's product because it had an exclusive deal with Intel. What we're looking at is whether these uh, contracts, these vertical restraints, might have an effect on firms that aren't actually involved in the vertical restraint per se. Vertical restraints are something that's, they could be good for society. Intel has to engage a lot in research and development. They don't know if it's gonna work in the end. It would be great for them if they know they have a firm that they can sell to for sure once they've made their product. But on the other hand, what if Intel gets all of the computer firms? Now, all of a sudden, the main rival of Intel, who in this case is AMD, they can't sell to anybody. So now you have a monopoly. It's hard to say what's going to happen in each situation. So what we want to do is we want to look at data and see what happens here. What we do is examine this exact case, Intel's vertical restraints with PC firms, and we want to see what's the impact on non-Dell firms. What I mean is the impact on how much AMD they sell. Typically, we, what we worry about is the example that I just gave. AMD would be completely out of the market. So from an economic perspective, we call that foreclosure. That means that AMD is just gone. If the impact of these vertical restraints by Intel was to actually make AMD a non-viable competitor for them, that's great because now Intel gets all the benefits of being more or less a monopoly, but not having to worry so much about uh, the competition policy authorities coming after them for foreclosing on AMD. So what we're looking at in this paper is a nuanced form of foreclosure, partial foreclosure, in that did these vertical restraints keep AMD out of the market enough? Something else came out of it, and that is, pretend like I'm a PC maker, I'm not Dell. And I'm thinking, wow, I really like AMD. I see that these vertical restraints are really effective. I see that Dell's offering zero. And Dell had 30-some percent of the market share. This is a big chunk of the PC market. What that says to me is, what if I want to offer AMD, but they can't deliver in the future because they're small. What if they just can't afford to invest in this really heavily investment intense area? And we find that that's the case. In an empirical framework, we control for all of the things that are good reasons why you want to sell AMD. Good quality, cheap price. And then after you control for all of that, it still matters that Intel has a vertical restraint with somebody else, one of your rivals. The second thing that came out is, what if I'm sitting there saying, oh, well, hmm, I don't like that they have these vertical restraints, but I noticed that all of these countries are bringing all these antitrust cases against Intel. They're getting into trouble. Maybe they're not gonna be able to do these vertical restraints so much anymore. We find that the number of antitrust cases that are brought against Intel across the world the more there are, the more likely I am to use AMD. Our results are consistent with the nuanced form of foreclosure. Not a firm leaves or stays, but something in between. AMD was still in the business. Our takeaway for antitrust authorities is that they should think about uh, partial foreclosure and catch these firms before it happens rather than after.